disciples came to Jesus saying who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven and calling to him a child he put him in the midst of them and said truly I say to you unless you turn and become like children you will never enter the kingdom of heaven whoever humbles himself like this child he is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven whoever receives one such child in my name receives me but whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin it would be better for him to have a great millstone fastened round his neck and to be drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe to the world for temptations to sin, for it is necessary that temptations come, but woe to the man by whom the temptation comes. And if your hand or your foot causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life maimed or lame than with two hands or two feet to be thrown into the eternal fire. And if your eye causes you to sin, Pluck it out and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into the hell of fire. See that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I tell you that in heaven their angels always behold the face of my Father who is in heaven, for the Son of Man came to save the lost. What do you think? If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them has gone astray, does he not leave the ninety-nine on the mountains and go in search of the one that went astray? And if he finds it, truly I say to you, he rejoices over it more than over the ninety-nine that never went astray. So it is not the will of my Father who is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have gained your brother. But if he does not listen, take one or two others along with you that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, let him be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. <laughs> لا لها أمين شوحا لمشيحا In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Lord God, we praise and thank you for the great gift of our faith. We ask you, Lord, to open our minds and our hearts, our ears today to be filled with your Holy Spirit and just fill us, Lord, with all the gifts and the graces that we need. Especially, we bring all of our struggles and our weaknesses to you now at this altar, and we ask that you give us your strength, your peace, and your comfort in the midst of this crazy life. We ask you, Lord, to bless us, to protect our families, and to help us always to strive to be holy, happy disciples of Jesus Christ. We ask this all through our blessed mother and Saint Joseph, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. 
you know when I say that, it's going to be a crazy homily, okay? So, but we do, we need to remember God's goodness. We need to remember how much God loves us. And that's something that's very important. You know that I love you, right? You know that I love you? Yes. Okay, good. That's important. And it's important to hear that from your church and from your priest, that you are loved, that this church is your home, this church is your place. And what we have to understand is the church is not filled with perfect people, right? No one in this church is perfect, not even myself. The church is filled with sinners, and I'm the first sinner, and the rest of us are sinners, and we are here because we're in need of God. We're here because we're in need of healing, every single one of us. So I wanted us to start there, that this church isn't a hotel, right? This isn't a place for the rich and the mighty. It's a place, it's a hospital. It's a place for the sick. That's why we come, because in a sense, we are in need of God's love. We're in need of his healing. And let's just keep that in mind today. I think that Jesus and, and the Lord in general in these readings is speaking very loud and clear today of how we can be led astray through sin and temptation. Jesus reminds us that in order to enter the kingdom of heaven, we have to be like children. We have to be children of God in order to enter into heaven. And what does that mean? It means that a child is completely dependent on his parents, his or her parents. And so God is saying, in order to enter heaven, you have to depend and rely completely upon me. Now, I think now more than ever in our world are we being tested with this very thing, to rely and depend on God. But I think what's happening now more than ever is more and more people are being led astray by this very world. I think a part of the problem a part of our temptation is simply the phrase, it's okay. It's okay. Everything today has become okay. It's okay. More and more is becoming normalized in our world. Now, the Bible itself tells us, woe to those who call evil good and good evil. And this is what's happening. As the years go by, as the world progresses, more and more of what used to be sin is becoming okay. It's okay. If a woman becomes pregnant and can't take care of her child, or it's an unwanted pregnancy, abortion is there for that woman, and it's okay. If two men fall in love, they can go to court and enter into a civil union, it's okay. If a couple is struggling to get pregnant, they can go to a doctor, do IVF, in vitro fertilization, and they can decide which children they want to keep and which children they want to throw away, because IVF is okay. If a family needs money, we can just grow weed. It's okay. If a woman feels like she's a man, she can take pills and get surgeries to transition to a man because it's okay. If a boyfriend or girlfriend or even fiancés have relations before marriage, they're in love, so it's okay. And today, if you want to work or go to school, you have to be fully vaccinated. And our freedom and our rights are literally being taken away from us, but yalla, it's okay. This is what's happening. The more we just say, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, when does it not become okay? Just this week, in Pennsylvania, legislators are trying to pass a bill where men have to get vasectomies either when they turn 40 or after their third child. Men have to get a vasectomy at 40 or after their third child so that, in America, they can no longer have children. When does it not become okay? When can we say, this is not okay? And this homily isn't meant to judge anyone. This homily isn't meant to condemn anyone. It's not. 
Remember, we're here because we're in need of God, every single one of us. But my brothers and sisters, none of these scenarios that I just mentioned are okay. None of them, not one, are okay. This world and this country is trying to normalize every single thing that Jesus and the Lord directly says is a sin, but to the world, it's okay. And Jesus gives us an example. He talks about the 99 sheep and the one that goes astray. But as I've been praying, what I've been realizing is it's the opposite today. It's not the one who goes astray. Today, the 99 are going astray. And the one is staying with the truth. And that's the sad reality. And now, when people hear a homily like this, it can easily feel like we're being judged. Certain communities can feel like they're being judged, and that's not my intention at all. And whether it's the vaccine, whether it's anything that has to do with LGBT, it seems like they want to throw the same Bible verses out. Do not judge. Love one another. Love your neighbor. But please don't use the Bible unless you believe in the entire Bible. Please do not throw the Word of God out of your mouth unless you truly live for God who wrote it. This is the truth. You see, these Bible verses are being thrown out, but are we reading the entire Bible? Are we listening to the entire Word of God? If we listen today to our readings, I want to point out certain scriptures that came from our readings today. For those who say, don't judge, for those who say, love your neighbor, love one another, well, this is Jesus' words too. So if you're going to throw those things out, then please listen to the word of God from the book of Deuteronomy. Fear the Lord your God, walk in all his ways, love him, serve the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and keep the commandments and statutes of the Lord. Deuteronomy, the Lord says, change your hearts and be no longer stubborn. St. Paul says, be infants in evil, but in thinking be mature. Jesus, Jesus Christ, Jesus who said, love one another. Jesus who said, love your neighbor. He said in today's gospel, if your hand or your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. For it is better for you to enter eternal life maimed or lame than to be thrown into the hells of fire with two hands and two feet. If your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. For it is better for you to enter life with a single eye than to enter into the hells of fire with two pairs of eyes. Jesus Christ says that. Jesus also says, if your brother sins, correct him. If your brother sins, go and tell him his sin. Why? Because it is not the will of my Father that any of these little ones should be lost. God does not want us to be lost. You see, we don't use the Bible for our own convenience. A lot of people use the Bible, they just want to quote certain verses just for their own convenience. We don't use the Bible for our convenience, we use the Bible for our conversion, for our change of mind and heart. That's why we use the Bible. Now, what I've realized today is we're too sensitive. And I start with myself, I'm sensitive too. We're too sensitive and we don't like being challenged. People today think that Jesus is no longer in the business of challenging people. He doesn't challenge people anymore. He just loves. Jesus just loves. Well, Habibi Azizi, right? Jesus is not retired. Jesus is not sitting on some island up in heaven collecting his 401k, okay? That's not what Jesus is doing. The entire Bible, from the beginning to the end, God is challenging his people. God is challenging his people from beginning to the end. Why do we think that has stopped? 
all of a sudden today. God is not done challenging us. And so the question for us is what is God challenging us to do? I'm not just talking to people that are living in a same-sex union. I'm not talking to people who are contemplating abortions. I'm talking to us. Because we are no better. Sometimes we have this mentality that, oh, I'm not that bad. I'm okay. I don't have sex before marriage. I don't grow weed. I'm okay. That's not the right mentality to have. Because if that's the way we think, we're never going to grow. We're never going to become holy the way God wants us to be. So what is God challenging us to do? We can't go out there and preach to other people if we have not preached to ourselves first. If we have not changed first, we can't go around and tell other people how to change. And so we need to challenge ourselves. What is God challenging you to do? Maybe it's to come to Mass every Sunday. Maybe it's to go to confession if you haven't been in a while. Maybe it's to end an unhealthy friendship or relationship. Maybe it's to love your spouse more, to be appreciative of your family more. What is God challenging you to do? That's the question we need to ask ourselves. We need to challenge ourselves. And we need to stop living like everything is okay. Because it's not. And we will find out the truth at our judgment day. We will find it out. We will know what the truth is then. And so we need to start living with that truth now. In this world, we are being led astray. And the further and further that we move from God, the more confusion we're going to have in our life, the more anxiety we're going to have in our life, the more sin will be in our life. St. Paul says our God is not a God of confusion. He's a God of peace. We should not be confused about this world. So, delete your social media, stop watching the news, okay? Please. Because what's going to make us happy isn't what the world is telling us. It's not what the world is telling us. What's going to make us happy is what's happening right here. And until we realize that, we will never live a life of joy. The way you can be challenged today is to recognize that this is the most important thing. This is the most important thing of your week. This is the most important thing of our life. And until we challenge ourselves to recognize that, we will never, ever, ever be happy. So, my brothers and sisters, what the world is telling us is not okay. But we're better than that. Because we know the truth, we know how much God loves us, and because of that, we have to love Him back with all of our hearts. Love one another. Love your neighbor. Do not judge. But... If your hand or your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. If your brother is sinning, tell him his sin. We have to fear our God with a love so great that we would never want to offend him in our lives. Amen. Amen.